Well, good morning. Today is Monday, April 15th. It's time for our weekly meeting highlights, and this week it's how to hack your points budget. Uh, I didn't go to my meeting last week because we did my son's birthday dinner, and it was at the same time as my meeting. But I did weigh on my scale at home, and according to my scale at home, I had a point two loss for a total of 36.6. I'm pretty sure my scale at home is pretty close to if not exactly, like the one at uh, the Weight Watchers meeting. So um, we'll find out on Thursday because I do intend on going to my meeting on this, th this Thursday. We're going to have a new leader. Um, Birdie's not going to be able to go because her husband and her have a doctor's appointment. Um, Ron's going to need some surgery, so he have, they have to meet with the surgeon. So I will be going all by my lonesome, and I'll be checking it out. And then next week, uh, Birdie and I are going to go together. And then um, the following week, I'll be on my cruise in Alaska. <laughs> So um, I want to get ready and get prepared. So anyway, this might help me on my, va on my vacation, how to hack your points budget. Picture this. It's Sunday night and you're thinking about the week ahead only to realize you have in invites to happy hours with your BFF, pizza Friday at work, and a neighbor's birthday party. There's no way you can do everything and stay on track, right? Not so fast. They say to try this. Think about which meal or foods or events matter the most to you this week. Do you live for Sunday brunch? Would you rather go to the birthday or would you go out for the night planned? Now, that's not to say that you can't do all three. You can do all three with a little bit of planning. Um, you can go for the brunch on Sunday and, you know, you can choose healthy items at a brunch and just kind of have the environment of all your friends together as the, the, the main focus of the meal, not the meal itself. Um, pizza, you can have pizza, just have a low point breakfast and a low point lunch. You can even have a zero point breakfast and a zero point lunch. And so you're all set for your two slices of pizza at night. And then for a birthday party, just, you know, like there's always a vegetable tray at a birthday party. It seems like always, I mean, a big party, there's always treats or snacks that you can pick that are healthy. And then just have a small slice of cake or a couple bites of a piece of cake. You don't even have to have the whole cake. I know. That's never going to happen in my world. But, you know, there are worlds out there that people live in <laughs> that that is possible for them. Uh, I have not reached that point yet. Uh, I don't know that I ever will reach that point, but I do strive to reach that point. I do my very best, get to my very best effort to try to get there. Um, I have gone down from having two slices of birthday cake to one slice of birthday cake to like a smaller, like a slice of cake, not a chunk of cake, because I've I've had pretty big pieces of cake, let me tell you. I've always tried to get the end where all the frosting is, you know, like if it's a layer cake or, or a sheet cake, rather. Um, so I, I strive to do better, and I think I do do better. The next thing you want to do is visualize your plate. What do you want on it and how much? Um, I would go for, which they tell you all the time, and it only makes sense. If, if you, I don't know, I'm just going to use mashed potatoes all the time. If, like if you can eat mashed potatoes every day of the week, why would you want to, use mashed potatoes when you're eating out. Try to figure out something else. There's always good options. There's always things that you might not have in an everyday life. Um, I don't make macaroni salad every day. I like macaroni salad. I like potato salad. Maybe just have like a, you know, you, you say like a couple tablespoons and you think, oh my God, a couple tablespoons. It really is enough. If you have like a two tablespoons of macaroni salad and two tablespoons of potato salad, it's more than enough. And do you really need to make a sandwich? A lot of times I won't use the bread. I'll just make the sandwich with like the lettuce and then put the meat and the cheese inside of it. Um, it's, it accomplishes the same thing. It's just how you want to visualize your plan and how you want to visualize your day. And pre-track the foods and the drinks. How many points did you use? How many dailies and weeklies are left? You can save your points for the whole week if you want to go out and have an extra piece of pizza on Friday. Um, just... Take the time to figure out your points each day. Uh, you can carry over, I think, two points. Yeah, it's been so long since I carried points over. It really has, I'll be honest with you. But I think it's two or four points you can carry over. And uh, I know you can go five over or ten under, and then you can still get extra points. So, I don't know, you know, you don't get point extra points if you go over. You only get points if you go under. But um, I, make sure you heard that right. Only get points if you go under, not over. But you're allowed within your budget to go five over because if you go five over, they're just using your weekly points and you're still staying within your points for the day. The, the, 
they tell you not to try to, you know, like occasions, special occasions come up and you want to use like if you have 30 points to save them up for that big day for the 30. But really, in actuality, what they would rather you did with the 30 points is divide it by seven and just use like um, four points extra a day. Maybe one day use five, you know, uh, just stretch them out for the week. But but they're there if, if it's a special occasion. And, you know, we can always say everything's a special occasion. But if you really think about it, how many things are really a special occasion? Um, you can work it within your budget. It's totally feasible. It's just a matter of tracking, 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 and being accountable to yourself. Measuring. Make sure you measure. Don't just guess. Uh, I've fallen back into the habit of, mm, yeah, that looks like a quarter cup. Eh, you know what? When I measure it out, it's really not. So you, you have to um, use all the tools that you're beckoning, all the tools that are available to you to use them. Use a scale. Use a measuring cup. Use measuring spoons. Use all of that. Make sure you, you, and I find that when you measure, if you do grams, you get a little bit more, just a little bit more, but just enough that maybe you think, okay, I got a little bit more. So I think that that's what you need to do. And sketch out the rest of your week. Where and how will you also allow your points to to go? Um, like I say, if I go to a brunch on Sunday, usually if I go to a brunch on Sunday, that pretty much fills me up for the day. It really does. You, you could. Uh, you know, I don't know something about it. It just does. And then maybe for dinner, have a light salad with a little bit of vinegar on it or a little bit of, uh, vin not vinegar, vinegar and oil or a little bit of lemon juice. I meant to say lemon juice. A little bit of lemon juice on it. Just something just to, you know, just to a, have an apple, have some fruit, you know, have something like that. And then like in the next day or two to kind of make up, if you did go a little bit overboard, try to limit your points. So like if you get 24, try to eat 20. Then you kind of balanced out what you did on Sunday. Uh, if you want even more flexibility and points to play with, this is some things that you can do. Lean on your zero-point foods and low-point recipes. Add points by moving more. <clears throat> you can log activity manually, so sync your fitness tracker to do it automatically. And use your weeklies and rollovers. Up to four, here you go, up to four unused daily points are automatically deposited into your weekly bank. See, there, I was, I was close, four. So like if you're 10 under, you're only going to get four. Don't think you're going to get 10. You're only going to get four. But four points, they can add up. They really can add up. And as far as um, I move, I, I do exercise, but I don't exercise to lose weight. Some people can exercise and lose weight. I am not one of them people. Um, if I exercise, I'm not going to lose weight just because I'm exercising. But I get the benefit of psychologically feeling so much better and thinking. Like when I start my day off with a walk, do I really want to ruin it by coming home and having like a couple of cookies and a glass of chocolate milk? Um, no, I, I just I just did this to get myself in a good frame of mind and to get my endorphins rolling and, and just feel good about everything. And so that's the plan. That's what you want to do. Now, some people, like I said, they can exercise and lose weight. I, I, I'm envious of them because that is not me. But I've, I've reached an age where whether I like it or not, I have to exercise. Otherwise, I'm going to get all stiff and achy and you know not move as fast as I'd like to uh, even now I don't move as fast as I'd like to but that comes with age but that doesn't mean I have to be like a snail I can still be moving along it just you know like we want to see where did I go oh I, I brought Mary to um I brought Mary to the doctors and um no, I take it back. I went to the eye doctor. That was it. I went to the eye doctor. And the young girl who was like in her 20s that was bringing me from room to room to get all the different tests, she was like a little, like a speed demon. And I could not keep up with her no matter how hard I tried. And I know a lot of it was because of my weight, but some of it was because of my age. And then I was just like, I'm envious. I'm really, I've reached the point when I look at people that are young, I'm envious of them because they, they get their whole life ahead of them and they don't realize how fast it's going to go by. <laughs> if They just don't. Because I know I didn't. I really didn't. And so I kind of look at them with envy and think, oh, if only I, you know, uh, you know shoulda, woulda, coulda. You know, like there's so many things that you shoulda, coulda, woulda done. But uh, it's just, um, I should have enjoyed my life a lot more. I enjoyed my life. Don't get me wrong. I had a, I've had a great life. I've had the best life ever. I really have. I've had my bumps in the road. Everybody does. You know, you learn from the bumps in the road. If everything was perfect, it'd be pretty darn boring. It really would. And you wouldn't learn any lessons along the way. But um, I think that one of the things, if I could go back and change things, was to appreciate the time I had at that moment rather than wishing for time that was going to come. That would be the only thing I would want to change in my life, really. It's just 
not wishing my life away, wishing that, you know, this would happen or that would happen. Just kind of take it at ease, you know, ease on down, ease on down the road. That's what I should have done. Anyway, let's dive a little deeper. If you've ever made a reservation for a special dinner, blocked out time every week to watch your kids play soccer, or front-loaded work tasks so you can unplug on vacation, you know how much smoother, go, how much smoother it goes when plan, you plan ahead. The same goes for reserving points for the foods and meals that matter most to you than strategically budgeting what's left. After all, a big part of what makes this journey livable is that it never tells you no. Sure, it might ask, would you rather? Or how can it be fit into your plan? But you're in charge and you don't have to give up anything, especially moments or foods that bring you joy. It's not always easy, as we all know. <laughs> But balancing special occasions, everyday meals, and other events means you can live your life and still lose weight. If you really think about it, there's 365 days in a year. How many holidays are there? How many birthdays are there? How many weddings are there? If you added them all up, it might add up to, I'll give you generous and say 60. I'll be generous saying 60 days out of the whole year. That still leaves you 305 days to do the right thing. So, and 306 if it's a leap year or 301, or 301 days if it's a leap year. But uh, all we can do is do the best we can. That's all we can do. Uh, try, try, try. And if you have a bad day, make, make it that one day and we'll move on. If you have a bad meal, move on to the next meal. It's hard. This is very hard. And uh, they don't call it a trip. They call it a journey. And the reason they call it a trip is because the trip has a destination and you reach the end. A journey means you're always striving to find something better. And uh, I just think that uh, this is a journey because even once you reach your destination, you're still traveling on because you got to hold on to what you've got so far. So anyway, a point two loss, not a great, you know, running up the flagpole, running around the block, shouting for joy, but it was a loss. That's all that matters. And then we'll see how I do this Thursday. So let me know how you did. Uh, let me know how you balance going to parties, going out to eat, going to brunches. Uh, what do you do? What kind of meals do you eat before you go? And Or do you just go, I'm just going to enjoy myself and then make up for it afterwards? I'm just kind of wondering how you do it. So uh, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Check me out on my daily vlog. If you don't come over there, come back next week and we'll talk again. How's that sound? See you soon. Mm -hmm.